right. Perfect. So today I am here with Rusty Martin, and Rusty is the media and worship pastor at Fellowship of the Park. So super happy to chat today, Rusty. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. I mean, I'm curious, what called you into ministry and how did you uh, find your way to Fellowship of the Parks? Yeah, so um, I felt like I was called to ministry at a a fairly young age, kind of coming out of high school into college. Um, I grew up in East Texas, which the churches back then and there 20 years plus i won't say my age but 20 plus years ago um was quite Uh, different than they were are today so my view of ministry was pretty limited um i I honestly just because of lack of what was going on in my hometown so um i always kind of felt caught but i just didn't think it was any of the roles that i perceived what ministry was in like a lead pastor or you know, Mm -hmm. a music guy on stage type of deal. So kind of got into college, started going to UTA. And uh, my second Mm -hmm. year, I met up with a guy, Ryan Slaughter, who uh, basically was doing production for a parachurch organization called Wisdom Works Ministries. And Mm -hmm. they used to put on student camps and and, uh, student conferences in camps. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, funny thing about it is, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit bigger guy. And so he mm-hmm. looked at me and said, Hey, I think you could load a truck. You want to come help us? Absolutely. So funny way how it kind of all started, but kind of really dove into my love into production and, um, mm-hmm. basically became how I learned how to do audio video lighting, um, we were mm-hmm. small, so we had to do it all, which was great because it made me learn kind of all the aspects of the production. So um, did that for several years, kind of bounced around with some few production companies. In the meantime, got married to my wife, Shanna. Um, we settled down in a um, place called Te- Keller, Texas. And yeah. um, basically a few months later, started going to Fellowship of the Parks, just attending back then it was a single location um pretty small um but needed in my my, in my humble opinion which wasn't very humble at the time they needed a little help on the production side Mm -hmm. so that's kind of how I got my start there at the church is starting volunteering basically and I still traveled and did things um as my kind of full-time job um after a few years of doing that, got really close to the worship pastor at the time, Matt Boswell, and um, we built up a pretty good relationship. And he basically, he said, I don't have much to pay you, but I'd love to bring you on staff to mm-hmm. kind of oversee our production media side of what we did. And so that was in 2007. And then, so I've been on staff since 2007 and I've seen tremendous growth, some uh, great change and just, uh, it's been an incredible experience for me and just as kind of as I've kind of grown, just uh, adopted and done more roles with the church. So, yeah, well, that is great to hear. So thank you for sharing that, Rusty. And I want to pull on a couple threads there because, uh, you know, when you cultivated that, it seems like that uh, passion for ministry was there before the interest in production. And so uh, when you arrived at Fellowship of the Parks, you mentioned uh, there was some, uh, there was a lot of opportunity on the production front. So if you're a church and you're wanting to grow or starting to grow, where well, there is a lot of that opportunity in production, what are some like quick wins or important things to prioritize first with those systems? Yeah, so um, when when kind of started out, we actually had a pretty good little core people that served probably most every weekend. But honestly, um, Mm -hmm. one of the things that um, Matt taught me early on was to invest in the people, and Mm -hmm. which is not natural for my in my I would call that a strength for me. And so Mm -hmm. um, he that really taught me a lot, and so taught me more about investing in that relationship so you can some develop some systems and some things that people can follow better but they got to believe in you first 
And so um, that I felt like him guiding me in that path really allowed me to get some quick wins and some quick changes that could help better what we were trying to do. Okay, yeah. Well, investing in the people is, uh, you know, most important. And speaking of people, you know, you mentioned uh, your single site when you started attending Fellowship of the Parks and you were, uh, you know, attending there without uh, being a part of the production team. Yeah, when you started to now you've been on you know, staff for years. Uh, what does that give you when it comes to ideas about recruiting people to serve and then recruiting volunteers to join your staff? Like, how do you find volunteers for production and recruit them? What are some of your ideas there? Yeah, no, that's great. Um, really just asking, just uh, building mm -hmm. up, um, not being afraid to ask, um, not being afraid to be told no, you know, that type mm -hmm. of deal. So it's not the first thing I ask, obviously, um, but building into my teams, the teams, the people that are already there, um, asking them, hey, does, does your spouse want to serve? Does your kids want to serve? Do anybody mm -hmm. in your small group want to serve? Um, and then, you know, empowering them to do that same thing, that multiplier effect, you know, because it can't all come from the leader. Like it's got to have some some help down down the path and so being okay with it being a little messy hey we're going to try a bunch of different people it may not be perfect and it may not be the spot for them too and that's okay we can find them something else but i think just mm -hmm. having the, the ability to, to not be scared to ask yeah absolutely i well, could not agree more there and with production in particular like what are some uh great roles in production that you find are the best like entry level for recruiting some volunteers because some stuff in production requires a certain skill set or experience to do well what are some kind of the entry level roles you like to recruit folks for yeah no um so you know doing things like per presenting or running lyrics for the songs mm -hmm. and for the message points so um we we break it down and try to kind of gauge where that person's at from uh from a level of comprehension and so we definitely start mm -hmm. with something like that a position like that and then kind of build up to lighting camera video director audio you know just kind of advance from there based on skill yeah absolutely well that is a good idea and when you talk you mentioned, hey, it's very important to empower volunteers. Like, what are uh, just some of the best ways you have empowered volunteers? Like, what things, uh, what are some values you operate by to do that? Yeah, I think really uh, we try to operate under the Great Commission kind of discipleship Absolutely. mechanism, right? And so mm -hmm. um, we have to be okay with helping them be able to succeed and fail and so through mm -hmm. that it's just giving them the opportunity to do that and so not being so close fist about it on control but you know empowering and so i think we we do a bunch of different things like we try to we have obviously the things that happen on the weekend but also mm -hmm. we have some different things during the week that people can if their schedules allow they could be um help with programming video editing, you know, a bunch of other things that um, helping on the music side too, you know, admin, you know, a bunch of different yeah. roles like that to try to find people and put them in the best seat on the bus. And so, yeah, we just really allow them to try and do, I think is, is as simple as that sounds is, hey, try and do if it works. Let's, that's great. Let's keep down that path and I'll continue to train you. And if it doesn't, we'll find a different role for you. Absolutely. Well, just trying is so important. I like, you know, it's kind of like the Yoda quote, like do or do not, there is no choice. I like that. Try and do, you know, this is what we are doing here. So uh, yeah. And then with that, like, what are some of your uh, short-term goals for ministry and production at Fellowship of the Parks and then some of your long-term goals? Yeah. One of the, the thing that we've done the past few summers is we've done kind of a pseudo summer internship. It's been mm -hmm. heavily on the media and production side the last few years. Mm -hmm. And um, this, this next, this coming up summer, I want to incorporate worship and creative even more. Um, yeah. So uh, that's, that's a, I would love to kind of take about 10 people 
and it doesn't have to be all students. It could be, old, you know, people that are, are adults or been down the career path, you know, mm -hmm. as well. We, we've taken just about, I've had as young as 12 and I've had as old as 60, you know, in, in that. And so it's been a wide range, obviously more on the younger side, which is kind of expected. Mm -hmm. But um, I'd like to kind of build that up a little bit more. And just because um, we're not planning on stopping doing campuses. So I just know that we need, yeah. obviously, leaders to help lead those uh, churches, basically. So um, and I had a pretty cool lunch a few weeks ago with a guy that was one of our first interns that we did. I think it was three or four years ago. Oh, wow. And he, he actually didn't he doesn't attend our church. But he came mm -hmm. and um, was a part and he's at a church now and he is doing excellent. So it, it's really cool to see God use whatever small part that we had, you know, in to help him find kind of his purpose. So that that's important to me. I felt like I felt like there was a lot of people early in my, you know, time that did that and invested into me. Um, mm -hmm. So I really want to kind of give back in that as well. Yeah, well, you're spot on there, Rusty, because, uh, you know, internships and serving opportunities uh, at church do both uh, a lot of personal and spiritual growth for people. So, like, uh, you know, going into the internship thing, what you mentioned you've been doing the internship thing for a few years now. What are some uh, things that you would recommend people do when looking at starting an internship thing? Like, what makes it uh, successful and what advice would you give people looking into that? Yeah, it could be really intimidating to start because like you're you're basically saying, hey, look at me, you know, that mm -hmm. type of that it could feel like that. But if you if you shift your perspective a little bit and make it more ministry minded, um, which sounds kind of crazy because mm -hmm. you're a church, but like you your your effect is really to point people to their purpose, not necessarily what you're looking out, what you're looking mm -hmm. from them. So when if you take that type of perspective into it and it makes it a lot easier to kind of say, hey, I'm just here to mentor you. I'm here to show you what I know may not be very much. You may already know more than what I know. But if mm -hmm. you kind of take that approach, it, it it doesn't seem as intimidating as it would, you know, like, oh, man, I got the pressure. I've got to I got to lead an audio clinic. I got to do a video director, you know, so on, so on, all the different deals. And, yeah. and honestly, you you get people behind it and, and give them the vision. You know, it can't be a one person show. It's got to be a team approach when it comes to that. So we have a great team that really has bought in us and honestly have seen the benefits from it. It it's one thing, mm -hmm. you know, when you're when you're when you're teaching somebody how to do it, you're really working on yourself, too, mm -hmm. when it comes down to it. Um same thing for, you know, um, I pride myself on leader development. So that's what I feel like God's kind of called me in the, the next phase is a little, a little less out of the production side. And now that I'm doing worship too, is developing leaders. And so that's mm -hmm. a, that's a key component that I want to add to this internship as well. Cause I feel like God's shown and blessed me with a lot of great resources and mentors, you know, it'd be shame to allow that knowledge to, to die with me. So. Yeah, absolutely. Could not agree more there. And when it comes to developing leaders in your church, like where are a few areas you really focus on? There? Yeah. So for me specifically, it's, it's in our ministries on the mm -hmm. production media side and on worship. Um, mm -hmm. They're, they're, the ones that I come in contact are kind of more bent that way. Um, if I ever come across anybody that I feel like could be like a campus pastor or could do an, mm. another role that's not necessarily under me, then I'll, I'll easily pass them along, you know, show them what I know and then kind of say, Hey, this may be a better path for you. Or, you know, mm. you may think about this, you know, type of deal. And so, um, I don't know if that answered your question, but um, oh, yeah. it's kind of, kind of the approach. Yeah, well, that is good uh, because as people, you know, start doing something, uh, their direction might change or they might grow into uh, something else. So that is spectacular. And uh, yeah, shared a lot of great advice and info here today, Rusty. I'm curious, like, just what other advice would you offer ministry leaders? 
Yeah, the biggest thing um, is it obviously our, our main goal is the goal is to point people to Jesus. And out mm-hmm. of that, we want to disciple people to to then take them and have them point others to to Jesus. So, yes. you know, it's about the people. It's about connection. It doesn't matter if you're uh, an extrovert or an introvert like me. It, it The church mm-hmm. is about community. And so um, you've got to you've got to provide places for people to connect either on a big scale with service or on a small scale, like in a media room behind a computer, even. Um, yeah. I, I'm just reminded and reminded like people just really want to be a part and they want to do their best. You know, if they're, yes. if they're messing up doing a role, it's not that they want to mess up. There's usually probably something hindering them, you know, causing mm-hmm. that to happen. So you got to have that relational side to kind of dig in and kind of find out what, what's going on, being okay to ask the question, Hey, slow down. Hey, I need, I need, Jim to jump in real quick, you know, that type of deal and, and go talk to whoever it is. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it, at the end of the day, ministry is messy, but you know, it's worth it. You know, what, what God's called us to do is um, I, I, I believe the greatest cause ever. And so we've got yes. to, we've got to protect it and, 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 and give it out as much as, you know, we can. So. Absolutely. Well, that is a great, and I agree, could not agree more there, Rusty. So, yeah, I appreciate you sharing the info, and as we develop leaders, it advances the kingdom. So we're always, uh, you know, it can be easy to think, oh, you know, this is uh, just something, you know, we're doing that's, you know, maybe, hey, we're just doing this. You're not just doing something small. You're doing something big, even if it's a small thing you're doing. So, Uh, Yeah, I appreciate you so much for sharing so much. I'm excited for what's ahead.